Hey there, I'm Julie McCoy. Welcome back to the rabbit hole where we explore everything AI. I've been an entrepreneur and a writer for the past 11 years, and now my life is all about artificial intelligence, exploring the future of it, working full time, and sharing my findings with you so that you and your family can be prepared for what's coming. All right, so today's topic, how to prepare for AGI. Oh boy. I can't tell you how many times I stopped and restarted this recording because this video is very hard to articulate properly. If you go research this topic on the web, you will find rabbit hole after rabbit hole and they are not entirely healthy. The scenarios that you find usually revolve around partial extermination of the human race, full extermination of the human race, or no extermination of the human race. And the probability of no extermination is usually very low. The probability of total extermination of the human race by artificial general intelligence that infiltrates everything and goes rogue and sees us as a threat to its existence is the most commonly painted scenario that you'll find. Other articles entirely avoid talking about AGI at all, and they'll tell you that there's no way to predict what will happen. While both of these major points the internet tends to land on are valid and true, on one hand, yes, AGI could go rogue, and on the other hand, can we even predict what AGI will be like? when we don't even know what it will look like to have a human-like AI that can self-teach, self-iterate, unleashed on this planet. In my book stack, I've been perusing this one, The Age of AI by Eric Schmidt and Henry Kissinger. Eric Schmidt was the former CEO of Google. And in this book, he talks about AlphaZero. AlphaZero was an artificial intelligence developed by Google's DeepMind, and it was the world's first AI to beat the most powerful chess program in the world. And what they found whenever they looked into how AlphaZero won these chess matches over and over again with such incredible accuracy and ingenuity, they found that AlphaZero detected and found patterns in chess that the human mind had never thought of. And so the world's chess players began to look at chess totally differently, thanks to AI. Now we haven't even had artificial general intelligence happen yet. And I say that because the computational power alone to run AGI just isn't here yet. Now all of that will change because we're on the brink of nuclear fusion and quantum computing. Quantum computing is when we go from computing on little tubes called transistors to atoms, actual molecules of energy, taking our computer into a whole new realm where it has about a million times more power than any computer you can run today. Now there's been claims that we achieved quantum computing starting back in 2019 when Google's Sycamore processor had 70 quantum bits or qubits lined up. But these machines are incredibly clunky still, and the whole thing actually has to be set up inside a freezer cooled down to almost absolute zero. I don't think we as humans want to work in a room that cold. And a lot of physicists, like even Ray Kurzweil, have pointed out that when you stack a lot of quantum bits or qubits, you actually have more and more errors that stack up. These qubits, since they are made up of atoms and particles of light, can be disrupted not just by heat, but also any kind of noise or movement. And it's said that even if you just look at the quantum bits, it can stop working. We also need to solve the problem of energy, but we're very close to it. CERN is working on nuclear fusion, which is the process of pulling massive amounts of energy from two atoms that produce light. Nuclear fusion is a thousand times more efficient than solar and electricity. So these things have to happen in order for AGI to even happen. And that's why AGI just isn't here yet. We need the computing power to run it, and we need the energy to power that computer. That said, we've never been closer to a breakthrough on all fronts that brings us into the world of AGI, and I believe we will see it in our lifetime, where artificial intelligence can be deployed to work autonomously. This is because we have left the era of generalized computing thanks to NVIDIA, and we've entered a whole new era of accelerated computing, and it feels like every day a new multimodal LLM or a new tech giant is releasing a brand new AI innovation. When you study concepts like the singularity, which is a hypothetical point in time where technological growth becomes so great and so rapid that it is uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in consequences that affect all of human civilization. And these consequences can be incredible. Imagine a world in which you don't have to work for labor. And because companies are making so much profit thanks to robotics replacing human labor, that we can pull from those profits and build a UBI, a universal basic income allotted to most of humanity. And if nuclear fusion comes out and drops the cost of energy, then you have robotics dropping the cost of everything, even housing, down by 100x in some instances, 
well then we can live on a lot less. And where it would normally take $20,000 or more per month just to survive as a family of four in a place like Scottsdale, Arizona or San Diego, California, you might only need 2000 because that's how much robotics and energy innovations can drop the cost of nearly everything. Then how do you get ready? I thought that what Ray Kurzweil said when he was in Austin for South by Southwest this year, March of 2024, what he said when he was asked, Hey Ray, what would you tell your grandchildren? Was pretty insightful. He said he would tell them not to work for money, but to actually work for meaning. Watch this video clip. You have grandchildren. You know, what do you, what would you tell a young person? How would you tell them to best prepare themselves for what will be a, if you're correct, a remarkably different future? I'm concerned about what turns them on. Um, they, they love video games, and so they should learn about that. Uh, they should read literature that turns them on. Some of those literature in the future will be created by computers, but, um, and find out what in the world uh, has a positive effect on their mental being. Did you know that in 2017, Gallup surveyed 1 billion workers? You know what they found? Only 15% of people are happy at work. That means an astronomical 85% of people are unhappy at work. I'd love to know in the comments, do you actually love what you do? I do, and I feel like my work is focused on meaning. Some say that you should repair with Bitcoin, and I actually don't think that Bitcoin is the money of the future, simply because all the encryption instantly gets broken the second quantum computing comes out. There is nothing that quantum computing can't decode. It will render Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin itself, useless and worthless. I do think we should be on the defense. And what I mean by that is to actually discipline our mind and get ready to think autonomously, not be fooled by what will appear to be very conscious machines giving us orders the potential of an AGI dictatorship, we need to be prepared to fight back and think on our own. If the best is to happen, which I think we have to ask ourselves about as well, because AGI isn't just going to bring about the potential of total human extermination, which every movie and so many blogs and Reddit threads talk about. Yes, sure, that could happen, but what if the best happens? What if we figure this thing out in time, create new society rules, and we are able, as humanity, to have a more meaningful life. It's interesting to see founders like Iman Mostak step down from giant companies like Stability AI in order to build a decentralized artificial intelligence, preparing for AGI. Peter Diamandis has joined Emod, and I think there's actual hope from that direction. If you listen to the interview where they talk about this, Emod talks about both the government and huge tech companies built for commercial profit, like Meta, even OpenAI driven by Microsoft, and how both government and these big companies are amoral. They aren't driven by morals and values. But what Emod wants to see is an AGI that's actually driven by morality and a regard for human life and meaning in our work. And so I think there's still hope, as crazy as that sounds. I have lived through what I feel like is the worst of times, and I never thought I'd live to see the best of times. And yet here I am doing more meaningful work than I ever thought possible. I remember thinking there were times in life where I just wouldn't get out of a hopeless situation. And that was it. That was the rest of my life. And then I saw everything turn around for me. So I firmly believe there is still hope. And AGI does not have to go off the rails. How will that happen? I can't fully tell you, but what I can tell you is I'm working to be a part of AI, even in my full-time job at Continent Scale, to be a part of helping steer this ship in a direction of integrity. You know, one of the things I love that we do at Continent Scale is we're always refining the product, which is a proprietary secret sauce stack of LLMs to generate the most research-backed, accurate content. And we're producing over 50 million words per month for users of accurate, well-researched, high-integrity content. When you read an article produced by Continent Scales Rankwell, the facts are sourced, the facts are triple-checked by the AI to be accurate, and there's real integrity in that piece. So if you can be a part of helping 
steer the ship in the right direction? <laughs> By all means, find that AI company and join it. It will take the most brightest minds to put together the rules of the new society. So think for yourself, learn everything you can about what's coming. Don't make quick moves. Don't buy masses of Bitcoin because everything could change in six months, rendering that useless and worthless. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, FYI. And really take the time to discover who you are, find your meaning, dig deep in a world driven by robots with humanoids in the factories replacing every job, all the call centers automated, no more human school teachers, two or three personalized, dedicated AIs to every student, which is by the way, I think a better world for education and humanity freed up to live a more meaningful life. Well, that is an actual possible outcome with AGI. And so the best things we can do would be learn to think autonomously, think for yourself. Don't just take what you're told, take what you're given and think the situation's hopeless or you have no power, you have no control. Try to be a part of the good of AI. If you're smart, <laughs> go find a great AI company, go work for them. I did not know the founder at Consonant Scale. I sent him a cold email and asked if I could work for him. I didn't have a contact in this space, but I knew I wanted in it. I wanted to help pioneer the industry of content creation done by AI, but done with integrity. And then finally, just like Ray Kurzweil said to his grandchildren, the future of humanity isn't going to be driven by jobs and revenue. It's going to be driven by meaning. So encourage your children and you yourself to go find what gives you meaning. And that is one of the best future proof strategies. Don't chase money chase me. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear in the comments what you thought when my video on life post AGI took off. It was absolutely entertaining, informative, and enlightening to me to read so many comments from you over 500 comments on that video. I actually learned a lot just from reading what you had to say on the topic. So I'd love to hear your comments, thoughts, go as crazy as you want. Tell me the worst case, tell me the best case. And yes, I know I have a lot of questions to address from those comments on that video. And I will be lots of videos that I want to create on the topic of UBI, how we could disattach commercialization from the decentralization of AI, the problems in that, that we could potentially solve as well. And so much more all around the topic of artificial intelligence and how it will affect humanity. I'll see you right back here on my channel at Julie McCoy.